Hey, what's up guys? Today I wanna to talk about the iPad Pro and I'm really excited about it because I upgraded from this guy that I got in 2020 to this guy, an absolute beast that can do basically anything I can throw at it. I can code, I can edit, and you know what? Will it replace my daily driver? I don't know, but you should stay tuned to check it out. And by the way, this whole entire thing was edited on the iPad Pro. Pretty standard ASMR unboxing here. As you can see, I pull off the tabs and the box just slides right off. I peel off the paper and we're pretty much ready to go. I set that down and look within and what do we have? A little shine cloth. It's fantastic and very similar to the one that I got with the Apple Vision Pro. Standard USB-C charging cable with power brick included. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Quick comparison, on the right is my old and on the left is the new iPad. And you can pretty quickly see that the right versus the left, old versus new, is that the right one is a little bit thicker. But that being said, the newer iPad has a thicker keyboard. And outside of the keyboard, the biggest change for me is the nano texture glass. This is a literal game changer when trying to work at the pool. So let's do a camera test, shall we? Let's set this down right here. Oh my gosh, this is my camera. That, that's, that's a terrible shot. Let's do, okay, that's a better shot. This makes me look exciting that I have hobbies. All right, look, crypto. So I wanted to do an audio test. I'm filming natively on the camera. Final Cut Pro, let's see how this looks, all right? So this is with my Rode audio. Sounds pretty cool, right? Let's see what it sounds like when I don't use my Rode. So this is the audio that is natively coming through the microphone. Let's see the difference one more time. So this is through the iPad itself. And this is coming through my Rode Wireless Pro. Awesome, okay, love it. See, like this is awesome. All right, this is multicam. I don't have four cameras, but technically you could have one, two, three, four cameras mapped to your final cut on your iPad and record a multicam like epic shot and just like cut in between all four angles. But unfortunately I only have one phone and therefore I can't really show it to you. But like, how cool is this? Look at that, infinity window, that is awesome and it's accessible to young filmmakers trying to make their art on an iPad. That's pretty cool. In. And hey, I'll be honest with my other Final Cut nerds out there. Look, I was kind of skeptical about editing with my hands, but let me tell you, once you do it for a little bit, it is kind of fun. As you can see, I'm focusing on editing on the car right now. I have the iPad up for my iPad review. And what's really cool is that it functions just like the Final Cut for MacBook and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So time for some short-lived criticism. At first, external drives wouldn't work, but we know today, now that's not the case. So editing on this thing is actually pretty great. And let me explain why. So a lot of the features you would probably assume wouldn't be on an iPad version are actually still there, okay? So one of my favorite features on the Mac version is voice isolation. And lo and behold, there it is right there. So you have some really pro tools on the iPad that you wouldn't really expect for this version. And let me just tell you, the flexibility of being able to take this to the pool, take it anywhere, have it in my hand, tactile editing, it's made the whole entire experience rich and just fun. I've said that word four times in this video so far, but that's what it is. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, James, listen, man, I know for a fact that I can edit faster on a Mac. You know what? Yes, you can. But that's not the point. The iPad version is meant to be tactile, mobile, accessible. We're now welcoming a whole new generation of filmmakers with this tool. And for the service plan of $50 a year makes it even more accessible versus the 300. And when you really sit down and think about it, people can make high quality films on this thing. Multicam, it's great. So let's, let me just show you this, right? Like the flexibility of scrolling through the timeline. It just feels good, right? Let me, oh, that clip right there, it's a little loud. Let's bring it down. We'll go to the volume and just kind of meow, 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 meow. It just, it just feels so natural. It's so native. I'm gonna, I actually like where the audio was, so I'm gonna put it back. But you get what I'm trying to say. The Clip Explorer is great. The additions of how you now download media from files and going into the drives externally, it makes it all really nice. I can go into my external drive now and go into, let's get this great shot of my Apple Vision Pro. I really like it. Is it in here? It's not in here. I just lied to you. But that is a great picture of me. Maybe I should take that. No, we won't do that. But like you can just grab anything, right? Here's my top down shot that I had when I was filming the unboxing version. I can just grab that and import it directly in. So having the ability to bring external media into the iPad version experience now makes it feel more holistic in what we expected it to be to begin with. So you want the summary. 
The iPad version of Final Cut is an epic win. Yes, you can edit it faster on your Mac, but I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend you check it out. Let's move on to coding. Okay, I had to get close for this one because I know you're looking for Jace. You're gonna solve all my problems. You're gonna make me feel so happy because you, Jason, you found the solution to make coding on the iPad accessible and fun. And I'm not here to do that because the reality is it's still not that great, okay? Not that great, but you can still do it. Right, so some caveats that we already know and we accept, right? You can't use Xcode. You can't make your iOS app. That's still not there, all right? And as a matter of fact, I feel like they're slapping you in the face with it because they have Sli uh, Swift Playgrounds. Remember that app that's just like a cute way to teach you how to write Swift that just makes you feel more infuriated as you watch that little robot skipping across its pad? Why are you so dumb? I hate you. It's infuriating, but you know what? Maybe one day, maybe we'll have something that's actually usable. But for now, all we have is Code Sandbox. And to be honest with you, not bad, but they still make you pay about $15 a month just so you can get all the full features unlocked so it makes it to where you don't want to rip your hair out. All right, now it is good, it works. I use it to code Next.js apps and I'll just show it to you right now. So yeah, I was being a little harsh because let's be honest, the UI is not bad, it works, and I guess that's the most important. So they have a couple sample projects I'm gonna open up for you so you can take a look. And as you can see, familiar JavaScript. And what's really great about this is that it's such an easy experience to navigate. It's very familiar and you don't get lost when you're trying to build out your applications. They even have this really cool preview function where you click right here and you can launch a preview window inside the screen. So you can see these real-time reflective changes that you're making in your code. I find this to be pretty fantastic. So maybe I'm overreacting because let's be honest, it works on the go. And especially if you have a 5G iPad like I do, I caught myself in a couple situations where I was coding on a lake and I was able to push these changes to my GitHub branch and everybody was happy because they thought I was crushing it. I was, but I was on a lake. Okay, I take it back. All right, I was wrong, okay? And it happens, you know, I was looking at it as I was recording my voiceover and I have to admit to myself that Code Sandbox actually isn't that bad. I think what happened is I'm a little jaded that Swift doesn't have the same presence that Code Sandbox has on its own platform, right? Because that's what we're trying to trend to expect with all the pro apps that are now coming to this ecosystem, right? We now have Final Cut Pro and now I want Xcode and that just hasn't happened yet. So in summary, yes, you can code on this. and to be quite frank, it's achieved everything I've thrown at it. I've been in real situations where I needed to push these changes to my GitHub remote branches and it was able to facilitate that. And not only was it able to facilitate these really complex things, it was allowed me to preview these changes in real time. As I just showed you, you have a preview browser that you're able to launch from within the code. That's pretty impressive. So yeah, this thing can code, it can edit. And you know what, I'm not gonna even go in depth on the media functionality, which was gonna be the third part of my review, but there really is no point because we know how that functions. Every kid has an iPad today. And you know what, I'm a big child myself and I've been enjoying the heck out of it. I installed Crunchyroll on it. I've been watching it on planes and in hotels. I travel a lot and this has been just a media beast. And especially when you have a 5G connection, you never have to worry about being on that slow airport internet to download your movies before getting on the plane. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you here next time on Elevate TV. Peace.